there's got to be a joke in there somewhere about the class one slides working, but the short line slides not working. I'm just not smart enough to think of it on the spot. So my name is Jeff Van Chake. I have a slideshow, and uh, I'm with Genesee in Wyoming. We are the largest holding company in the United States of short line railroads and across the world. Uh, we're traded publicly in the New York Stock Exchange with a $4 billion market cap, 122 railroads across the world, 115 in the U.S., and about uh, 30, I'm sorry, 13,000 track miles. So as in class one terms, that puts us sixth in terms of track miles between Canadian National and Canadian Pacific. So although we're a pretty big company, we're actually a bunch of small independent companies. And all those independent companies have different ownership structures, different customers, different commodities that they haul. The one thing we all have in common is safety. Our company pushes safety harder than any company that I've ever worked for. I know uh, people like to see the commodity diversity slide, so this is ours. We haul a lot of things, a lot of different places. In Texas specifically, our biggest commodity is inbound aggregates, but some of the more interesting ones are does anyone know what the favorite soft drink of Texans is? There you go, DP, we haul uh, corn syrup inbound to make Dr. Pepper. And if you have late night cravings at T-Bell, we also move cornmeal for Doritos. I've not tried one and I don't plan to, but you know, that's cool, that's your thing. So a quick little side note, which is basically irrelevant to Texas, but I think it's interesting, so I'm gonna tell it anyway. Back in the 1970s, New York City, New York State was a pretty horrible place. Lots of crime, it was dirty, people didn't want to visit. And so they embarked on this big ad campaign uh, to try to bring people there. And does anyone know what came out of that? It's the, one of the most famous branded pieces of whatever in history. There it is, I Heart New York. Right smack in the middle there, designed by Milton Glaser in the back of a cab with a scrap piece of paper and a couple of crayons. That's now in the Museum of Modern Art. So the connection to I Love New York and Genesee, Wyoming at home is that our chairman at the time, a guy named Mort Fuller, was friends of a friend of Milton Glaser. So Milton Glaser designed the Genesee, Wyoming logo and color scheme in 1979. All that to say, that we did not copy BNSF's color scheme, I think quite the contrary. They copied ours. I will take applause for that, if you're interested. So quickly on G&W in Texas, we have uh, seven short lines, all pretty small ones. We have more short lines in Texas than Watco, but they move substantially more traffic than we do. I, I know where I'm beat. Uh, you know, we're, we're pleased to be here, and we think there's a lot of growth and a lot of opportunity in the state, and we've seen it as we've tried to grow as GW and as a part of the Texas Railroad Association, Texas Shoreline Railroad Association. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity, both for new customers, for new economic development initiatives, and for uh, new funding programs. So what I'm going to walk through quickly before turning it over to Ryan down at the end uh, is four basic blanket statements of how our Texas Shoreline Railroad Association is going to view the next, the interim session here and then the 2019 legislative session in Austin. And we kept them pretty broad because as railroads, most of the time we play defense. We very rarely get to play offense. So a lot of these are defensive statements. Um, first one is we're gonna try to increase our presence in Austin. It's something we worked hard at this past year, going down a bunch of times, meeting with legislators, uh, shaking hands with staffers, going to see the administration folks. And the reception that we've gotten has been one of, as Laura mentioned, where have you been in our lives? Because we've been around for a long time, we just haven't had anyone down there to tell the story. So as we continue to grow and we continue to tell our story, we hope that opportunities like being part of the Texas Freight Advisory Committee will continue to push and having meetings with people in the lieutenant governor's office and you're seeing my thunder on that one it's just it, there's a lot of work to still be done and so we do take a part in texas rail day with the class one group uh, and any other opportunities we have we're going to continue to try to push our message because we think it's a valuable one for the local communities who don't necessarily have the bandwidth to send people to austin to push for their for their cities and towns and the things that they need. 
Secondly, we're going to ensure modal equity among transportation modes. That's a fancy word for please don't increase truck weights. Big deal for us. We see a lot of diversion in states that have increased truck weights, specifically in Ohio. There's an example of coiled steel in Colorado. It's, uh, I think it was Marley, or I'm sorry, uh, Barley for beer. Maybe it was Mall. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway, serving the course facility in Colorado. A lot of diversion there that impacts ultimately not only the railroad, but the infrastructure, the roadway infrastructure that's driven on. Thirdly, we're going to push back against overreaching regulatory initiatives where I see a lot of states fumble when they try to legislate railroads is where it comes to federal preemption and we are very federally preempted on a lot of things and even where we're not we've done things a certain way for so long that it's difficult to gain any traction so if, if we see something come out of Austin working with our class one folks as well that could harm the rail industry we're gonna fight it and we're gonna fight it hard so we can continue to operate the best way that we can and then lastly, we're going to, as a short line group, promote healthy investment in short line infrastructure. That's a common theme I've heard from almost everyone who stood up here today, that there continues to be a need for infrastructure investment in Texas, whether it's roads, high speed rail, short lines. Uh, we're a little biased, so we're going to push the short line side of it. We do think there is opportunities in tax credits, there's opportunities in grant funding. Ryan's going to talk at length about what we did last year trying to push a tax credit, which was ultimately unsuccessful. but. I think started to get the conversations flowing about the need short lines have, the opportunity we provide to customers and local communities, and more importantly, the jobs that we create and retain in Texas. So that's my high-level overview. I'm happy to answer questions after this, but Ryan, you want to take up and...